Welcome everyone to the Howl Podcast, where we feature individuals with various backgrounds with captivating stories to tell. And our goal is to bring people together by sharing diverse perspectives and experiences to inspire positive change in the world. And I'm so excited for this episode in particular because we have a really cool guest and a really cool ending to this episode. So just stay tuned for that. Don't go anywhere and don't skip any, don't, don't skip either. So just wait until the end to see what happens. So uh, our next guest is Tony Segala, who is a very, very talented musician, guitar player, drum player, you know, whatever instrument you can think of. And he has performed also with various bands such as Rossic Mark. And he is currently a guitar instructor. So we're going to be diving more into music, his music career, but also um, the instructor side of things and what kind of advice he would give to students, to instructors, etc. So I'm very excited for this episode in particular. And without further ado, please welcome Tony Segala. Welcome <laughs> to The Howl. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks Thank for having so me. Much. I'm, I'm so excited, so nervous, but uh, I'm here. I'm delighted to be uh, chatting with you. Absolutely. And uh, as a former sort of musician myself, I really am excited for this, for this episode because, uh, you know, I love learning uh, from instructors, from various instructors, uh, mm -hmm. even current instructors. So um, I kind of want to see, I guess, your philosophy in teaching as well and teaching <laughs> different uh, types of students. So, you know, first of all, I just want people to know who you are for um, people who haven't met you or uh, taught by you, etc. So tell the audience a little bit more about yourself and your background as well. Sure. So um, I am a musician, music instructor, and on the side, I'm, I'm a transcriber. Um, that's the my main thing that I do is a, I'm a private music instructor working for a music academy uh, titled Rock Stars of Tomorrow. And uh, I, I am a guitar instructor, but... Uh, I primarily teach drums. Drums are actually my, that's my main instrument. I started with that. But I also do vocals, I do piano and ukulele. Um, our main demographic there is like kids from like five to 17 years old, but like we teach any uh, age there. So yeah, my youngest is like five and my oldest is 50. Um, I also play drums at St. John's Lutheran Church in Orange on Sundays, that's really fun. And then on my spare time, I like to make YouTube videos where like I, I demonstrate uh, my own like guitar or acoustic guitar arrangements of pop music and video game music. So that's yeah. what I do. That's amazing. And first of all, I want to say I love how you pronounced ukulele. <laughs> I love yeah. that. It's not, it's yeah, not it's, uh, the typical thing that people ukulele. pronounce. Ukulele. Ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> Can you share yeah. with us how you began your musical journey and what got you inspired in, you know, I guess, pursuing, you know, music? Sure. So it all started like in the early 2000s. Um, it's uh, with lowrider oldies music. I was a, a just something about that style of music um, struck a chord in me. I would always just sing along to to the to the songs. Um, so that's that's where it all began, like my love for music. And then uh, somewhere in the mid 2000s, maybe 2007, there was a, a garage band uh, next door and my brother was in it. And one day I heard them play and I was like, oh, that sounds really cool. So I asked my brother, I was like, hey, can, like, can I watch you guys like play? And he's like, yeah, well, let, we're playing tomorrow again. So I go and I'm just super fixated on the drums. I don't know what it was, but something about the drums were just like telling me, this is what you're gonna be doing. This is, this is it right here. And I was like, all right, cool. So I asked, I was like, hey, can I play the drums? And they're like, yeah, you know, go ahead and mess around. Eventually I asked my dad, I was like, hey, like, I really want to learn how to play drums. Can we, can I get a drum set? And uh, he's like, yeah, we'll get you a drum set. And I was like, oh crap, okay. And so by, I think 2007, like summer, I got my first drum set for three years straight. I didn't miss a day of practicing. I loved it. I absolutely loved playing the drums. Um, so that was that was like the gateway right there, the, the drum set. That opened me up to learning guitar, learning uh, vocals, piano, uh, the ukulele, even the bass guitar. 
all that stuff. It was uh, it was really cool. And then other other things like uh, joining choir, joining marching band, uh, doing competitions, talent shows, um, college choir, doing things like that. Also, you know, reinforced my my love for music and my my constant uh, motivation and desire to just keep on going. I love that. I love that so much. Would you say like playing the drums as an instrument, would you, would you say that drums is the one that you feel closest connection to? I do. Uh, yes, mm-hmm. very much so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Explain more about that. And, you know, having you having to work with like guitar and other instruments as well. Why does drums feel more close to you than uh, those other instruments? It's, it's primarily a rhythmic instrument and that's something that my body just gravitates toward at first whenever I, I listen to a song my foot starts tapping or my head starts nodding or or whatever um, if it's a slow song my heartbeat you know relaxes and or if it's a fast-paced song my heartbeat rises and you know it's it's always that's always the the initial reaction is what's the rhythm doing how is it affecting my body how is it affecting how I feel and so I think that's just why I always just gravita- gravitated towards rhythmic instruments, any percussion instruments, you know? I mean, percussion is the right word, not rhythmic, percussion. Yeah. Um, so like things like, uh, you know, drums, bongos, uh, timbales, whatever, you know, the percussion instrument is, even a cowbell, you know? I love the cowbell. So good. Um, it's just something about it, like, it makes me want to dance. It makes me feel good. It, uh, it puts my worries away, you know? just like any other instrument. But for me, it was the drums that really spoke to me. Yeah. And I can see that for myself too, even though I don't particularly play drums, you know, whenever I would play guitar or something like that, or even just listen to music in general, I see myself either head bobbing, you know, even with other people and even like just trying to figure out what the tempo is, just like tapping my, tapping my foot, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I think that drums has such a great, connection in music to various aspects of instruments and also music and also different songs so yeah i would say like what what would music be without you know percussion and drums what would it be would it just be strings and sounds interesting <laughs> yeah it, it would be like uh it would be plain chants just like like really old like church chanting music there's yeah. no rhythm it's just people singing a drone note you know Absolutely, for sure. <laughs> and why not? yeah, why not? And you know, speaking of drums, you were a drummer for, or I guess still are a drummer for various bands, and also perform live as well. Like, can you share some memorable moments as a drummer? Um, maybe a performance, or maybe you know, working on some songs, maybe some music videos along the way. Can you share some memorable moments? Sure, sure. So, like, my first um, memory of ever, like, playing... Well, I have multiple, um, but the one that that's, like, stuck... It's a core memory is my first performance with my garage band or my college band. Um, we were called Kindred, and we we were mainly instrumental. We, didn't, we couldn't find a singer, but that didn't stop us. Um, so it was... A, guitar bass uh drums and rhythm guitar and we played our first show at this place called meow meows in pasadena i believe and it was just it was my first taste of you know playing rock music live on a drum set in front of strangers in a store in in a clothing store it's a really tiny tiny store uh really cool vibe though Mm -hmm. and that that was my first taste and i absolutely loved it um and then um after that we did a couple of like house gigs and stuff like that we did a second uh performance at meow meows again but we didn't have our lead guitarist then so it was just the three of us still loved it though it was a good time um with artists i've I performed with like rossick mark i've i've worked with seth charleston um, and we also did a couple of performances too with Rossick Mark. I, the, the recent one we did was I think last year. Um, I forget what, what the, the venue was. I can't remember the name, mm-hmm. but, uh, that was my first time playing with a click, uh, in my ears. 
um and that was fun <laughs> really uh i was really nervous because like if i mess up that click if i don't start it at the right time it's over if i'm off the click it's gonna be a mess so yeah. it was it was stressful but uh, i think i did a good job uh <laughs> at pressing the buttons at the right time um so that was really fun that was my first uh my first uh time playing with the click live uh, and then um one performance I'm, I'm most excited about right now is with clarence we have one coming up soon and i'm going to be playing drums for her at the vermont so that's going to be really exciting there you go guys uh, if you don't have a ticket yet go ahead and get it because it's going to be very exciting to see tony sigala on the drums and clarence singing for the world so yes. definitely buy your tickets <laughs> <laughs> um great so let's uh, talk about you as an instructor, as a musical sure. instructor today. So what initially sparked it? What sparked your interest in teaching students and sharing your musical knowledge with other people, with people who are, you said, from 5 to 17, right? Yeah, yeah, mostly 5 to 17. We have some, some elderly people too. Um, I, I think it all started when when I was in, in college, I was taking music theory classes and musicianship classes and stuff like that. And, um, it was, I, I was one of the, the odd one, odd, odd kids. Cause I loved music theory. I loved talking about it. I loved doing the homework, um, <laughs> doing the exams and all that stuff. I was one of the weird ones. Uh, but anyway, I, I became a, a music theory tutor and musicianship tutor for, I think just for a semester or a year, I, I can't remember, but that was my first time, like, you know, tutoring people um, and helping them out, trying to understand how to do their homework, you know, asking them, using the Socratic method to like help them do their own homework and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that was, that, that, be, that has become a big part of my, my teaching, my philosophy, my philosophy is the Socratic method, just asking why, why are you doing this? Why is it helping you? How are you doing this? But mainly the, the why question. Um, and um so it started with that it started with tutoring and then that kind of like sparked my interest in teaching you know trying to teach somebody um and so when i went to when i was going to cal state long beach um that's where i was studying uh to be uh or i was getting my bachelor's degree in music and we we did a course in vocal development and that's where like i got my my second taste of like trying to teach someone how to, you know, take care of their voice, how to, how to do warm ups, how to build a routine, um, things like that, how to sing, you know, with the, the fundamentals of singing. And from there, that's when I decided, you know, I think, I think I would like to make this a career, you know, cause I, I really enjoy it. I like talking about it and I like seeing people, you know, realize that they can actually, you know, play an instrument well or sing or whatever the case may be. So, and now I'm, I've been teaching for, for two years here at Rockstars of Tomorrow and it's, I absolutely love it. That's great. And regarding your teaching philosophy, like you mentioned, how do you, how do you approach your lessons? How do you approach your lessons with your students to ensure that they have really a fulfilling and learning experience, right? Cause not everyone learns the same way. So how right. do you approach your lessons? Well, it's there, there, there's two main things that, that I do that, well, that I've realized, um, the Socratic method, obviously, and then, uh, establishing rapport with, with my students, no matter, no matter what age they are. Um, if, if they're really young, it's all about making it fun, you know, using colors, using numbers, using knowledge that they have, you know, that they can understand. Um, and then you know, for teenagers and up, it's now it's more, you know, terminology based, a, a terminology based approach being I'm, I'm using words or jargon um, so that they can use so I can communicate with them and, or help them communicate with other musicians or their teachers and whatnot. Um, and then with like my older students, uh, my, my adults, it's all just terminology. Um, I, you know, I, I use sometimes I may use colors or numbers or, you know, uh, the approaches that I use with younger students with older students, just cause it's, it still helps, you know, it, it, it boils down the, the less, or it boils down the, the techniques 
or the materials that we're working down to, you know, its basic, most basic form. And so it helps. Um, but those are the two main things that, that I, I do is I, I try to, you know, get to, I get to know the student. I, I want to know what they like, what they don't like, so I don't waste their time. Um, I want to know what their goals are. Like, you know, for like the older uh, students, you know, I ask them what their goals are. For the younger students, I just try to make it fun. And mm -hmm. and uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, just, just fun for the young students. Um, okay. Yeah. So for the older students, like you mentioned, like you all, you basically talk about everything that they want to know during the first day, the second day. Like, how does it work? Like, you know, do you mm -hmm. like what kind of expectations do you have of them? Um, you know, I guess the first couple sessions. Right. So if if they are if they are just starting uh, lessons, if it's their first lesson, then I, I usually spend the, the first time with them just asking questions like, "What do you want to do? What kind of music do you like?" Um, what songs do you want to learn? Do you want to learn how to read music? That's a big question because um, uh, we don't we don't advertise that like we we teach reading music. I, I think I'm not sure, but but uh, we you know every teacher there has their own way of of approaching you know how to teach their students, and um, I get a lot of students who just want to do you know ear training or or they want to learn music by just me showing them and not telling them here read this um a, a lot of stu the younger students are like that they just want to play and and be taught or, or showed how to do it mm -hmm. um yeah uh let's see here refresh my memory what was the question <laughs> i yeah, got lost yeah man. that's you already pretty much answered the question but i wanted to follow up on it because you know i would say that teaching is actually different skill than actually playing the guitar or playing a certain instrument, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, you would say, you you would think that a person who is really good at a certain instrument can also teach, you know, other students the same way to be as, as good as they are. But right. in, my, in the back of my mind, I'm like, maybe that's not necessarily the case because I know a few people who are not necessarily, as far as technique is concerned, you know, the you know close to being the best or or better than uh, other people but they're teaching the, the way that they teach students um are really effective right so would you say yeah. would you agree with that assessment that you know like teaching is actually a different skill than uh, you know being you know a good uh instrumentalist per se definitely definitely um because you have to make the lesson productive you have to keep it there has to be flow in, in the lesson. If you, if you are a talented musician, um, who, who I guess doesn't have an approach to, to teaching, um, it can, the lesson can just fly by 30 minutes done and then nothing happens. You have to have a, a lesson plan, uh, certain, you know, um, approaches to, to teaching a, a, a technique, a concept an exercise, whatever it may be, you have to have a game plan. And you have to think about how you're going to do it before you do it. And sometimes mm -hmm. when you do that, it doesn't work. <laughs> and there's a lot of times where I have a game plan. And then it, as soon as the lesson starts, it goes a completely different direction. And I'm like, wow. oh, man, did I do something wrong or, or whatever? And so maybe, yes, you know, I could possibly, it's, it's, it's likely that I, I did something wrong. But it's likely that, you know, it's, it's just, it has to be. Um, that it just, it happened to be, you know, a case where like, you know, I'm just going to go with this. I, it went wrong. <laughs> My game plan went wrong. So I need to, I need to go a different direction. And that's yeah. where like, you have to go think outside the box, like on the spot, you have to think of, about a different way of, of approaching it. And that's where I got the idea of like using colors to teach drums or like using, yeah, like, like colors. Like for example, have you ever played rock band? Yes. On drums, you know how you have four colors, red, mm -hmm. blue, or whatever they are. Mm -hmm. um, that's something I had to use for some of my younger students. Um, like, I, I don't remember who, but one of my students was having trouble trying to, like, understand what, what they were trying to do on the drums. And I, I cut out some, you know, circular red construction papers, and I put it on the drums, and I wrote down the pattern in colors, 
mm-hmm. as clear as possible, and then they got it. Like, and they were having fun at the same time. There so you, you know, things like that. You just gotta, you just gotta think outside the box. That's awesome. That's awesome creativity for sure. And、yeah. I would even say for teaching, it could also be a two-way street. It's not just you teaching the student. But in some、oh, yeah. ways, you can learn like stuff from your students. Like you mentioned, you had to be creative to do those, you know, that that rock band、uh, philosophy that you had.、Yeah. And I would say that instructors also learn from their students as well. So, can you share some insights on maybe some of the some of the things that you learn from teaching in general, or just teaching students? Yeah, well, the kind of、uh, going off of what you said about t-、uh, students teaching their teachers. Yes, I I learn a lot about myself as a teacher from teaching students. You know, especially from mistakes.、Uh, for example,、uh, when I started, I, I tended to just talk a lot about what to do rather than just talk a little bit, demonstrate it, spend more time demonstrating, and then spend a lot more time having them demonstrate to you. So that's something I learned from being told by my students.、Um, hey. Can I just play? <laughs> like, can you can you just let me play it? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you know. And so that that was like my my first couple of months, you know, teaching. I had to learn that, and I'm I'm you know grateful that they that they did that that they told me, look, shut up, let me just play it. I'm like, all right, cool, yeah, you're right, you know. So that's that's something I learned from my students is I I'm I've learned to just boil down the information as best I can, as simply as I can. So that they can understand it, and then I demonstrate it to them as slowly as possible, and then I ask them to demonstrate them as as best they can, and so that's that's what that's how it goes at least for me. Great, yeah. And I guess segueing into like you mentioned about like practicing, right?、Um, yeah. What do you think the importance of practice is without the instructor, right? Like, let's say. You know, you do lessons once a week or maybe twice a week, even.、Um, how how much better is it, or not even better, to practice on your own rather than practicing with an instructor? Because that that's a totally different kind of learning style, right? It is. I mean, that's that's what I did like pretty much my entire like what for for a whole decade. I didn't have an instructor,、um, and even when I did, like it didn't last because. I guess we couldn't afford it, you know. So I, I did have a couple of lessons for like a month with the drum instructor, and then with with other instructors.、Um, when I was going to school, though, I did have vocal instruction for about five years,、um, but the state paid for that. But、um, if you don't have an instructor,、um, practicing without one, it's like if if I think about what I did, I I just. I soaked up as much information as I as I possibly could from YouTube videos,、um, from live performances, from friends who also play. In fact, my my technically my first teacher was my brother's friend Hugo. He he showed me, or actually my neighbor Bobby.、Um, he showed me a couple of things on the drums first, and then it was my、uh, my brother's friend Hugo.、Um, but it wasn't like every day. It was just like a one a one time thing. And、uh, I, I just, I, I guess it's my, it was my love for the drums that kind of just made me want to just learn, you know, whatever I could. And it didn't matter if I, if I sucked or if, if I wasn't good or if I kept making mistakes. I just, I kept on going and kept on learning. And、uh, that, that was my approach. You know, with, I didn't have an instructor. I just kept on going. I had my YouTube videos that I went to, obviously,、um, you know, I went that I went to here and there just. As reference, but I think once I had a, once I watched enough YouTube videos, I kind of had the idea of what I needed to do. If there was ever a, a complicated technique that I needed to learn, then I would re- research that. But for the most part, once I had the gist about how, or once I had a routine, I was I was good on my own.、Um, but I having an instructor is still very important because they can spot things that you can't. A lot fat, a lot sooner, and so you'll you'll spend a lot less time trying to figure out what you need to work on because somebody somebody else's eyes has already seen it and they're telling you what you need to work on in addition to what you already know.、So、Absolutely, totally,、uh, I totally agree with that a hundred percent because 
I remember I forgot what age I was actually when I started guitar. I think it was like around from five to seven years old. And I kept going until 13, basically disciplined every single week. And I would say that an instructor is super important. It's definitely not required because there's so many resources out there that are available to you. Right. I know a musician in particular who's super good at guitar named Josh Rosenblum. And he, he's so, he's so yeah. good at like, you know, playing guitar, et cetera. And, yes. and he mentioned that he doesn't have an instructor actually. But for me, I would say that, you know, if you have the resources and time for it, if you can, I would say it's a really good way to have an instructor because it's it's a way for you to have a course correction kind of thing. Yeah. So... So whenever you're practicing basically like so many hours in a day or so many hours in the week, and then once a week or twice a week, you'll have an instructor basically to kind of still guide you and course correct you and then tell you like what other methods or techniques you can do to further learn from what you're already doing. Because I think it's also important like as opposed to having an instructor to also have that dedication if you really want to learn how to play a certain instrument to you know play on your own right like play like learn from your own as well because learning is a i guess you know learning from your senses as well like your feel your yeah. touch your you know hearing as well mm-hmm. so that's right. the kind of stuff that you develop over the years and it takes so much time and that's why a lot of students really start young because they'll have a lot of time correct know, to to learn um so i would say you know if if you can definitely do it but if not like tony mentioned you know youtube videos what else uh tutorials friends etc prints no, no, friends. <laughs> like friends. if you have friends or okay. if you have, you know, if you know somebody who, who knows how to play, jam out with them. You know, you'll learn a lot just from jamming out. And you I don't need say, a lesson. Yeah. And, and I think you learn also from having fun. Like if, if it's something you Correct. really like to do, as opposed to if you're miserable, like doing it, then you won't <laughs> learn as much. Right. So, so definitely have fun while doing it as well. See if that works for you. But yeah. I would, I, I really wanted to ask this question as well, because, you know, I think that guitar instructors are very fundamental in like how I learned how to play guitar, how I developed those techniques of plucking and strumming as well Mm -hmm. as like other shapes of my fingers as well. But what are, what do you think are the key qualities that a great instructor has, whether it's like a guitar instructor or like a drum instructor, like what are maybe like two to three, maybe one actually, we'll see, uh, key qualities. The, the, the one that comes to my mind is patience. That is, is a big one because from my experience, um, there are days where the student just can't, you know, no matter what I do, they, they, they can't understand a concept or they're having trouble with a drum beat or a guitar lick or wh- whatever the case may be. And we're spending 10, 15 minutes trying to, you know, trying to learn how to do it. Um, and um, it's... It's you, you need that that patience to just to allow them to figure it out on their own, and if 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 you start to see like that they're getting frustrated, then that's when you're like you intervene and you're like, all right, cool, let's let's take a break, work on something else. We can come back to that, no problem. And so so patience would be a big thing. I I think um, uh, that's one of the big things. Um, if if I were to I don't know maybe think of another one. Probably just uh, maybe establishing, you know, rapport with the student. Yeah. Like genuinely wanting to know what they like, what they don't like uh, about music or what their goals are, what they want to learn. Just knowing who they are when it comes to music. That's, that's a big thing um, because then they like you, then they want to learn from you and that sort of thing. Absolutely. And and I would say that music is also such a complex language, I would say, that there's so many things you can teach. So if you're just teaching them stuff that they don't even want to learn, like you're pretty much, I don't know, it's kind of a waste of time, I would say. That's why I think like establishing, you know, like you mentioned, um, you know, what they want to learn uh, right off the bat, then you can kind of cater to what they um, they want. So... Right. But that's definitely a challenge in itself. Like, let's say, like, they're getting tired or frustrated or something like that. Um, because I've experienced that 
in the past as well because learning is not an easy thing right learning like something yeah. new in particular especially in a short amount of time right like maybe a session is like 30 minutes to an hour more but if you if you're expected to learn a certain song that is very complicated within that span of time it can be very frustrating right yeah so mm-hmm. That's definitely one of the challenges I had to face before. Um, but as an instructor yourself or a musician in general, like you've likely enc- encountered also challenges and roadblocks throughout your journey. So can you share maybe some of the challenges you faced? Were there some students that also feeling the same way? Like, oh my, like, like so, some people needing to take breaks, some people, you know, not learning a certain technique like really fast or anything. Sure. Uh, some challenges that are very common is trying as a teacher, trying to get your students to practice. That's something that's, that's, uh, you know, common everywhere. You know, how do I, uh, how do I motivate or how do I convince my student that it's in their best interest to practice? You know, it's really difficult. I, I still, you know, have students who, you know, from my eyes aren't practicing at home because they come by, they come back to the lesson and they're, they haven't improved. It's, it's really easy to tell when you, when a student doesn't, when, when a student hasn't practiced, it's really easy for guitar too. Cause when they come, when they come to, to class and their guitar is untuned, they probably didn't touch it. You know, <laughs> they probably just <laughs> left it there, uh, or, or practice with an untuned guitar, who knows. But that, that is, uh, one of my biggest challenges is trying to get my students to practice. Um, there are some students who just won't budge. Um, uh, no matter what I tell them, no matter how I talk to them, or even, even if I talk to the parents, you know, um, there are those that, that for me, that's my biggest challenge. Uh, And I, I'm still trying to figure out for, you know, those students, how to get them to practice. Um, but, um, for other students, uh, their, their biggest thing is like, oh, I have school, you know, I have other things going on. And what, usually what I tell them is, look, you can, you can simplify your routine for practice. Five minutes, just do five minutes and you can do a scale, you know, at 120 BPM and then try to get to 140 or whatever. Um, you can work on paradiddles for five minutes, whatever the case may be. And then you're done. Okay. And what do you do next? You do it again tomorrow. Five minutes. Just do whenever you can that that that's that's an easy routine to build okay you can start there and then you can work on just building that up 10 minutes okay next week start doing a 10 minute session every day and then 15 next week and then so on and so forth that has worked out for some of my students um is is just building that routine slowly but surely um other times it takes maybe just showing them a, a youtube video of this really cool young musician who's doing cool stuff and they're like oh i want to do that too you know so that's that's what i would say yeah totally and i definitely agree with that um that you know scheduling can also be a uh, can play a big factor in not being able to you know learn a certain technique or learn a certain song or something like that or maybe just the interest right like maybe there are days or weeks that you know they just feel like not doing it right and then just really just rely on the instructor or the, the instructor to teach them, you know, that lesson. And that's about it. They're just playing basically once a week. Right. And, right. you know, that can play a very big factor as well because learning, you know, can really take a while, um, you know, once a week and an hour per week as well. Um, if you really want to be as good as for example like john mayer or something like that (laughs) in that sort Mm -hmm. it takes a long time right so you just have to match you really have to match basically the hours that they put in as opposed to just you know doing once a week an hour a week so what i what tony mentioned earlier about scaling it down and make make things um, easier for you is very important so one of the things that he mentioned was um what making it small and then not necessarily working hours but minutes you know scaling it yep. down to minutes really helps so that's one of the things i did 
And one of the things that actually worked for me was making it fun, right? Making it yes, making it fun, not making it a very miserable uh, learning experience. And also the importance of taking breaks as well. Yes, is a that's a big importance. Yeah, yeah, because you can easily fry your brain, and your focus is just out the window. It's just you won't retain the information or the the, the muscle memory. So totally. you definitely need to take breaks. Yeah, and and I would say also taking breaks is like you know, even though you're not physically playing anymore you still like your brain is still kind of learning it at the back of your mind right like what you yep. just did what you're it's still processing uh, right. a certain hand style or, or anything like that or a rhythm or something right? mm-hmm. so that's also very important and yeah thank you so much for sharing those uh, roadblocks and challenges and i would say that music is also creative it's also a form of expression Right. Is that something yeah. you kind of teach to the students too, to kind of maybe improvise on their, you know, techniques? So, so maybe you're playing a certain song and you're just jamming out with them and then you're kind of teaching them to be creative in terms of, I don't know, like learning a scale and then see what they can come up with. Oh yeah. Always. Yeah. It's, it's all about creativity, you know? Um, especially, um, I do this a lot with my, my drum students, uh, only because, um, a lot of them are, are at that level where like they can really, you know, create stuff on their own. Um, a lot of my guitar instructors are, are really young, but I'm working on it. <laughs> so, uh, for, for drums, uh, I, I usually give them, a uh, one, let's say a drum fill to, that they can use as a template. And then I tell them, all right, what are some of, some other ways you can use this? You now, what other parts of the drums can you use? You know, how far can you make it different? How you know, how similar can you make it? You know, questions like that. Um, and I, we, I test them out and, or we test them out. And if, if I, if he thinks it sounds good, if he likes it, then we go with that. So a lot of the creativity comes, uh, for drums. It's, it's, it's in the drum fill. Sometimes it's in the drum beat. You know, we don't want to, I don't want to change the groove too much. I want it to, you know, reflect what the, what the song is. Um, but generally, I, I target the drum fills um, when it, whenever I, I want them to create something. I also do freestyle, um, like 10 to five minute sessions at the end of a class on certain days nice. where like, I just, yeah, I just jam out with my student and they jam out with me and we create beats. Um, I create a beat for them and then they, you know, and it's just, you know, it's a, what's the word? It, we, we, we go off of each other, you know, they play something, I play something. And then we learn from each other. It's really cool. Very fun. Very fun, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to be in one of your classes for sure. I've never played <laughs> cool. drums before. Maybe I'll do a, a first drum session with you. But um, yeah, I would say what advice would you give to someone who is mm-hmm. an inspiring musician, aspiring musician who is just starting out, like no experience whatsoever, who is basically going into a class with no knowledge whatsoever. So... Any advice would you give those people? Let's see. Someone who's, uh, who has like no fresh. experience or like fresh, really fresh, but very passionate as well. Okay. Let's see here. Just listen to what first you want to find an instrument that you really lo- that you really like, you know, start doing, just start listening to, to music. What, what is it that you're hearing? what do you like about it? Find it. For me, it was drums, you know, find that instrument. Is it guitar? Is it vocals? It's a, you know, piano, violin, whatever. Find that instrument, you know, explore. And then, um, just the, the main thing is just have fun, you know, and don't stop playing. Do not stop playing. Music is too good to, to just give up, you know, it's going to get hard, but it's once you get past, (laughs) <laughs> like for guitar players, once you get past bar chords or the F major chord, you're on your way. You're done. Yeah, you're you're, <laughs> that's your first boss battle. Just keep on going. Do not go back. It's um, it's just it's it's worthwhile to know how to play an instrument because it's a it's a memory machine. Um, it's you you get so many you make so many you make so many fond memories and you get so many opportunities um, just from being a musician or just from playing music. You know, just as a dilettante. Um, so I guess I, I would, I would say find something you love to play 
and don't stop playing it because it's going to be worthwhile. Absolutely. Absolutely. And who doesn't love music, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's it's been a part music? of us since like the dawn of time, you know? We've all been playing music, you know, in, in, in whatever way possible. Absolutely. And in terms of improvement, what tips or techniques do you recommend, you know, your students or maybe someone who's just starting out to kind of maximize their progress, right? Because not everyone learns the same way or progress the same way. Sure. Um, I'm really big on, on routines and just, you know, telling yourself or, or discipline, you know, you got to have discipline, you know, because a lot of times you're not going to want to play, but that shouldn't matter. <laughs> if, uh, if you really want to learn how to play, you have to have that discipline instilled in you so you can actually get some progress so you can actually grow. Um, cause you're going to, as a musician, you're going to counter a lot of boss battles, you know, uh, the F major chord, that's a big one for guitar players. Bar chords is, is it's really hard to do. Um, but you need perseverance. You, you need to just keep on going and don't worry about mistakes. A, a lot of times I get a lot of students just saying, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like, no, you don't have to apologize to me, to yourself. Learn from your mistakes. You're doing, you know, you're doing great. Just keep it up. Don't stop. You know? Um, so yeah, just like, just don't stop, dude. Like everything's going to be okay. <laughs> everything's going to be okay. And I would say that mistakes are even good to have because that's the thing that, that actually progresses you to become better. They're encouraged. Better. Yeah. Yeah. They are encouraged. encouraged. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I tell my students. Like, I need you to make a mistake. You know, if you're playing perfectly, there's something wrong. Like, what are you doing here? <laughs> you know, make a mistake. You know, you, you got to play something wrong. That way I can help you out. I can tell you how to fix things, how to, how to maintain, you know, your progress and all that stuff. But yeah, definitely mistakes are encouraged. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And what about people maybe some of them who are making mistakes or someone who is basically not as interested anymore, right? Like later in the long run. Um, I remember myself, like when I was 13, I, th I found a calling in film and that's really what I wanted to pursue, but it's still in the back of my mind. I still have that music passion. Right. So, you know, mm -hmm. uh, at this point, like I have like 20, 25 to 26 guitars or something like that. <laughs> uh, so, so I'm still passionate about it, but I would say there are people who are very, you know, in, in the beginning, they have this discipline, they have this drive, at least in the beginning. And then later on, they're just discouraged. Maybe they think that maybe music is not something they want to pursue in the long run or want to do uh, in the near or distant future. So what would you say to those people who are discouraged or maybe, you know, people who just don't feel like playing music anymore? Um, it, that's perfectly valid. You know, that, that's yeah. fine if, they, if, if people feel that way. Sometimes you need a break from music. Yeah. I know I said don't stop, but breaks are, are important. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may need a long break from music for whatever reason. Maybe, yeah, you found uh, a different calling. That's perfectly fine. But I know a lot of the people who, who have done that and they still have their instruments and they still play once in a while their favorite songs, you know, or they play to just feel, you know, the nostalgia of their, you know, of their pastime. Um, so like, what would I say to those people? I mean, just keep your instruments, you know, it's, there's a, it's a time machine. If you pick it up again, you're going to feel good. You know, you're going to come back to all those memories of you playing, of you studying, of you meeting other people, playing shows, you know, doing competitions, whatever the case may be, you know, um, keep your instruments because they, they are, you know, uh, they're, it, that's part of you. You know, you don't want to throw away a, a, a part of something that's a part of you. Keep, keep, keep it, you know, <laughs> just keep it. Don't throw Absolutely. it away. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that music also is a way for people to come together, whether it's like, you know, a bar or whether it's like a festival, or whether it's a film, you, you know, like a movie, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you see the importance of music, you know, from a music instructor perspective, not necessarily talking about, you know, tips and tricks and techniques or something, but like as a general whole, like, what do you think the importance of music is for the world? Man, that's a, that's a big question. Yeah, it's huge. Well, what's, what's the, the importance of music? Well, it's definitely have some, it definitely has some therapeutic powers um from from what i understand I, I remember reading a book 
um, called Musicophilia, and it talked it talked about a lot of um, a lot of uh, scenarios where like a, a patient was was who, who had a condition or whatever the case may be went through music therapy and it it like helped them I guess alleviate some symptoms or whatever I can't remember what what I read it was a long time ago but it was a cool book and because of the book I I know that music can be very therapeutic and it can help people um, just you know cure or at least relieve whatever they're going through whatever pain they're going through or whatever stress that they're going through it's it's really a stress reliever too for for the general public you know for for anybody out there um, listening to music playing music whatever it may be it's it's definitely something that we need to keep if we want a quick or not a quick but if we want to feel good you know if you want to feel connected to something uh, to your community or to a song or to yourself it's definitely worth keeping um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I would say. <laughs> That's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And, you know, as humans, we experience so many emotions, right? And like along our life path. And I would yes. say that, you know, there's so many songs out there that cater to all those types of emotions, whether you feel like you're lost, whether you feel like you want to take over the world, whether you want to go for a run, etc. Like I think music yeah. plays such a huge uh, part in everyone's, you know, sanity as well. So. It does. Yeah, I would say even even the the oof, even just sounds that's even part of music. Maybe just the ocean sounds. I consider that music yeah. as well. The sound of wind, the sound of you know li- little things like that. Not necessarily a, um, a musical instrument, but even you know just just sounds of nature and the Correct, sounds yeah. of voices, etc. That's also part of music. And funny enough, maybe those tracks, those those recorded, you know, ambiance can also be used in a certain song or something like that. And there's so Definitely. many different ways to, you know, to have music in your life. And I think it's very important because um, it caters to like how you feel. Right. Like, emotions you express. Right. So it, it touches your emotions. And so it strikes a chord in a lot of people. And that's why we have it. That's why we have it. Speaking of which, we're going to take a very quick break. But uh, Tony, you have something special for us today. You're going to be for- performing something for us, right? Yes, I will be performing Gerudo Valley from The Legend of Zelda. Uh, it's a it's two parts, lead guitar, rhythm guitar. And uh, it's uh, it's going to be fun. It's, a, it's in the style of Rodrigo y Gabriela, which is what they play is instrumental rock and like flamenco fusion style of music. And so that's what I'll be doing. I'm very excited because I'm also a huge legend of Zelda fan. And I just (laughs) love, I love Gerudo Valley in general and I love the guitar playing. So I'm excited for people to hear what you have to do or what you have to play Gerudo Valley by Tony Segala.
Wow, Tony, that was so amazing. As always, I'm not really surprised that, you know, you are such a great guitar player. I know you mentioned that you're, you know, mostly a drum player. But, you know, guys, if you've listened to Tony Segala's guitar playing in person... It's, oh my God, it's a different story. And you've, you've seen his videos already, or, for, or some of you have seen his videos. He's such a talented person. So I just want to thank Tony Sigala for being our guest for today. And I want people to know, you know, where people can find you if they have any questions or any, anything they want to ask to you on social media. Like, where can people find you? Sure. So the two main ones are YouTube and Instagram. Uh, I believe on YouTube, I have a link tree or uh, I think Instagram, I have a link tree. So just click on there. You'll go to my, my, my YouTube page and all that stuff. You'll get to see the videos there. I also do some, I have video game transcriptions that I do on ultimateguitar.com. You'll see that on the link tree as well. Uh, I believe my name is Saint underscore Baratoni on Instagram and on YouTube, it's uh, st dot Baratoni. So that's where you can find me. And Barry Tony is B-A-R-I-T-O-N-Y, correct? Correct, yeah. <laughs> it's a weird name, but yeah. I love it. I love it. Tony, thank you so much for being a guest. And uh, any final words to the audience? Uh, well, I want to say thank you to you first. Thank you for having me. It was great. Uh, for the audience, I, I hope that, uh, I don't know, maybe you learned something today. Maybe not. Um, but... Uh, just keep music in your life you know it's it's a beautiful thing it's it's uh it's gonna get you through hard times gonna get you some opportunities um and you might meet the the one you know you, you might meet the love of your life so uh just keep music with you there you go thank you everyone thank you everyone for watching this episode of the howl and i'll see you next time